Well, welcome everyone. Hope you're having a great weekend. Josh is severe weather here to talk about the tropics and we have a new tropical storm, Fernan, uh, which has formed to the southeast of Bermuda. That is moving northward and likely to be Fernan the fish and not affect any direct land masses. We'll talk about that. There's another wave we're watching that is going to be moving towards the windward islands here later tomorrow and then into the Caribbean. Uh, some hostile road ahead of it, but it could have some future here down the road. So we need to be taking a closer look at that. Also, some other systems to watch across the globe, and I'll talk about all of those here. So I appreciate you joining me here. We're going to get right to it here with Zoom Earth. You can see now Fernan uh, to the northeast of Puerto Rico, southeast of Bermuda. Uh, we have what's left of Aaron, still a very powerful cyclone uh, moving away from the Maritimes, and that will weaken as it gets closer to Iceland and Ireland here next week. Uh, we also have a disturbance that could become a depression or storm off the coast of Mexico. But of uh, the greatest concern this evening is severe tropical storm Kajiki. Uh, also, uh, I think I had another name to it, the Philippine name, but that is actually getting close to uh, the southern portion of Hainan in China and eventually will make landfall in northern Vietnam as a typhoon here uh, Sunday night. So we're going to be watching that one here, another area to keep an eye on as well to the east of the Philippines, but this one is the one of greatest concern for the time being. Uh, here's a look at that system, and you can see it's approaching typhoon strength as it moves closer to the southern tip of Hainan. That's the southernmost portion of China. That's this island here that sticks out. Uh, that's probably not going to slow it down much. Uh, the initial or the um, the uh, final landfall is set to be in Vietnam here in about 24 hours. Now we're going to talk about the Atlantic. Here's Fernand, and that is a new updated tropical storm aircraft were in there this afternoon and found a closed off circulation. Uh, it had tropical storm force winds, regardless of whether or not they're going to find that circulation, but they have find it, found it closed off. It is moving quickly, though, to the north at 15 miles per hour over a pocket of warm water. So expect it to strengthen and located at 27.2 north and 61.4 west. And the pressure is fairly high at 10, 10 millibars. But the area that we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about today is this disturbance, uh, Invest 99, which has found its way across the main development region of the Atlantic and has not developed due to the fact that there's been some dry air and there's been quite a bit of wind shear, uh, but it is still holding on strong. And we're going to start to see weather moving into the islands here later tomorrow and then continuing into Monday. Uh, after that, it may struggle for a little bit, but there's still a possibility it could be a named system. Here's a look at what we're tracking here with Aaron moving out. This is Fernand. And this is what we're watching to be potentially Gabrielle here at some point in the next few days. The chance is fairly low. I think it's a little higher uh, from the European than it is from the Hurricane Center. But we're going to have to keep an eye on it because a storm like this still has a chance of developing. Uh, although the road ahead is going to be a lot tougher for it to survive over the Central Caribbean here when it gets into Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Fernand, you can see, is turning away. It may bring some gusty winds to the Avalon Peninsula of Newfoundland, just like we saw earlier this morning uh, with Aaron, but that is unlikely to be a direct hit. All eyes are going to be on the southwestern Caribbean here for the second half of next week, and we'll keep a closer eye on what the longer term looks like here. I do want to show you some possibilities. After that, uh, the odds of something coming across uh, from Africa and making their way to the U.S. is going to be pretty slim as we get into the beginning of September. After that, it should start to pick back up. But uh, our better storm chances are going to be closer to land with a front coming down, and that this time of the year needs to be watched. Uh, here's a look at our uh, infrared from Tropical Tidbits showing you what's going on across the Atlantic Ocean. I'm going to circle everything for you here. This is Fernand. Uh, the center is on the eastern side of this convection. This is Bermuda right here. And uh, models a couple of days ago had this going right over, and now they're going to stay to the east. And in general, that storm is going to head up in this direction following the remains of Aaron, which is still a pretty strong system, uh, but lacks that tropical storm core. This is the next area to watch. Despite wind shear, you can see it's hanging on with thunderstorm activity heading this direction. Uh, it'll move through the Windward Islands tomorrow evening. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that closer to home. Here in the U.S., it's been awfully unsettled over Florida and the southeast. And unfortunately, we're going to be dealing with more heavy rain affecting eastern North Carolina, in particular the Outer Banks, which just got hit with some strong wind and surf here uh, as Aaron came pretty close. This, though, will be a bona fide rainstorm uh, for the second half of this weekend. And you can see on the map as well, we've got a pretty strong front 
getting ready to make its way into the eastern and mid-southern portions of the country. And that is going to bring us a little bit of a taste of early fall as well. Elsewhere in the Pacific, we're watching this area, which uh, has some potential down the road to become a tropical storm. Uh, but right now, it's a little bit too early to get specific on that. No threat to land, though, at this time. Here is the uh, warning track of Fernand. Uh, I called it Fernand for several days, and then I uh, got myself corrected. It's a, it's a tough one for me to say personally, but you can see here that uh, it is already to a point where it's expected to start to drift more east of north, and that is good news for Bermuda. Yesterday, the tracks were a lot closer. Today, uh, the low pressure system has found a way to form itself on the eastern side of the storm. So you can see it's not likely to be a direct impact. There's going to be a window in here, though, where it does have a chance to become a hurricane, probably not a major hurricane, but a lower end one. Uh, but at that point, just stirring up the fish over the north central Atlantic and then following Aaron by the time we get to uh, next Tuesday and Wednesday. So uh, not a very big storm. You can see, though, the chance for tropical storm force winds remains offshore of Bermuda and remains just offshore of the Avalon Peninsula. Uh, there will be a, a chance for hurricane force wind as well, albeit it's slim. But I think that'll happen after it gets past Bermuda, and so does the Hurricane Center at this point. Speaking of Aaron, take a look at this big fish out here. Still a massive system, uh, but no more thunderstorm activity near the center as it is just a powerful post-tropical system. Post-tropical meaning it was tropical, then as it got into colder water, it lost the warm core, but still has the strong winds that come with it here. And uh, that is something we're going to have to keep an eye on here in Western Europe over the coming days. It is expected to weaken some. Here's Fernon and or Fernon. <laughs> I'm just start saying pheromone and please, <laughs> please get don't give me too much of a hard time. It's not a name I run into a lot, but you can see it's kind of a disorganized system. There's a little bit of wind shear and dry air around it. Uh, models uh, yesterday were showing that this system was going to have enough of a favorable environment to get together quickly. It hasn't quite done that yet. It's on the struggle bus this evening, but uh, the center has formed according to the hurricane hur hurricane hunters. Uh, which have been flying into the system here and are still in it. And you can see here uh, at latest path, the uh, or latest pass, uh, the path of the system uh, on the eastern side here, there's enough winds around it, surrounding it to uh, classify it as a tropical storm. Winds about 40 miles per hour. So on the low end, pressure kind of high. Uh, but those stronger winds are well to the east of the center and southeast of the center. There's some strong winds, though, near enough to the center to call this a tropical storm. So uh, at this point, you can see it's already beginning to lose some longitude, so no direct threat to Bermuda, which is up in here, uh, and it is not strengthened over the second path uh, pass of the center just yet. But you will see water temperatures here are significantly warm. Uh, in fact, some of the warmest water we have over the subtropics, uh, that is not the deep tropics, and you can see Bermuda here um, did not get directly hit by Aaron. Aaron, you can see where the water is cooled in the wake of it. So this is actually going to go over some warm water here for the next few days and does have a chance of intensifying. And we'll talk about uh, where it's going here. You can see pretty standard curve off to the north and east. Uh, pressures do come down some, uh, reaching its maximum somewhere to the south of Newfoundland here on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, you can see pretty good agreement on all of our models. Only one ensemble member does show this being a potential threat to Newfoundland. So we don't want to rule that out completely, but you can see the Google model keeps everything off the coast at this point. And some chance it gets to category one intensity here. If it does it, it's probably Sunday night or Monday, maybe Monday night, but then we go into cooler water and the system would weaken after that. You can see our tropical models as well. Only one of them now showing category one. A couple of days ago, we had category two and three potential, but because the storm has taken longer to form and find that center going, uh, it's just doesn't have enough of a runway to really get ramped up too strong. So the official forecast uh, from the Hurricane Center at this point. Let me uh, take you over here real quick. Sorry, I'm dancing around here. The official forecast does have it getting up to 70 miles per hour here um, as it's moved well past Bermuda. So it's very close. It, it has a, ch a chance of becoming a hurricane, but it's going to be a small window here and a fairly small storm. You can see this is where post-tropical Aaron is. It's going to come within about 100 miles of it, according to this uh, forecast track. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, real quick, just showing you the structure of the storm. The GFS shows a lot of dry air surrounding the system. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you all can see it here. Uh, making its closest approach to Bermuda here um, in the evening tomorrow, so Sunday evening, and then lifting away. And you can see the GFS does no longer show it 
becoming a hurricane like it did a couple of days ago. It has it struggling here. That's a possibility. So we'll keep an eye on it, see how it works with the stats here. Uh, here's our next area to watch. This is Invest 99L, and it, despite some incredibly strong wind shear down here, it is holding its own and actually uh, flaring up more thunderstorms with it, which has me concerned only because this is looking a lot better than what I thought it was going to look like and what many of the models did as well. So you can see here uh, the Lesser Antilles are off on the western side of my left side of my screen here. I'm trying to grab my pen for you here. Uh, this right here, Barbados, you can see wherever there's a center, which is probably not closed off, is about east of Barbados. And it's starting to gain a little bit of latitude, which is a little bit concerning uh, only because models a couple of days ago were indicating it was going to come down into here and start interacting with the ABC islands in South America. Now you can see the trajectory is a little bit to the north of west, meaning it's going to have a chance of crossing the Caribbean here, and that will include some warmer water as it does so. Uh, so despite the wind shear, you can see now our tropical models are starting to give it a little bit more of a future. It's going to be a bumpy future. It's going to be a rough couple of days here in the central Caribbean, but you can see uh, about half of our models show this trying to sneak to down towards uh Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and maybe Honduras, and the other half either kill it or start to turn it a little bit more poleward here into the Northwestern Caribbean, which I do think is an option uh, we need, do need to be considering at this point. Here's a GFS ensemble. It never really develops our system, but you can see it's got a little bit of promise as it comes into the Caribbean here on Sunday night and Monday morning. Uh, and the Canadian does start to show some possibilities a little bit farther north here. Now, don't get too concerned about this just yet. This is our least reliable model, and these are ensembles, and there's quite a few of them, but we do have some support for a system trying to turn its way into the northern Gulf or heading west across Mexico, and really just too soon at this point to get too carried away with it, but something we have to watch. Again, the intensity forecast doesn't really excite me, but we're seeing more and more models showing this getting up to tropical storm intensity here in the 36 to 48 hour time window, which would be right as it's moving into the Caribbean and right through the uh, northern Windward Islands. So a lot more models showing some potential here in the longer term and even somewhat in the next day or day and a half that this becomes not just a depression, but a tropical storm. The name would be Gabrielle. So we're going to have to watch it pretty closely here, closer than I thought we were going to be this weekend, just to be honest with everybody here. But uh, definitely some potential here, and I showed all those to you. And I do want to show you the European ensemble here real quick. And you can see most of its members now are showing at least a closed-off low-pressure system. And I want to zoom in here real quick and show you the uh, – see if I can find Gulf and Caribbean here uh, – showing you here that there are a few ensemble members that are now – bringing this up to at least tropical storm intensity, even an outlier that shows a hurricane here when we get into uh, Tuesday night, early Wednesday. So a little bit uh, more of a concern at this point if you're in Jamaica and Haiti and eventually the Cayman Islands. Uh, so we'll have to watch it here, but this is definitely uh, over time become a little bit more concerning. But again, you can see there's a, just a, an incredible amount of spread and a lot of our ensemble members don't even show it surviving. The ones that do show it surviving show it coming up towards the Gulf. So we got to watch it pretty closely at this point. Uh, you will see here the uh, Google mine model still showing it staying quite weak, maybe a tropical storm in here, but showing you those European ensemble members. Again, you can see very few of them are uh, just killing it off. There's a couple that do down in here in the Southwestern Caribbean near Colombia, near San, Andr San Andres and maybe near Nicaragua, but a few more now showing something towards the Yucatan and several bringing this up into the Gulf. The time frame on that uh, is going to be about a week from today if it does so. So Labor Day weekend, we might have something here we got to be talking about. You can see I showed this to you here. Um, here's a look at the halves model, just giving you an idea of the wind field kind of holding on here. It looks kind of messy, but uh, Barbados could see tropical storm force wind gusts, but it looks like the bulk of the gustier winds will be trending a little bit farther to the north, uh, maybe towards uh, Dominica and Guadeloupe and those islands there. So kind of the central island chain here is where the stronger winds will go. And you can see uh, after that, things should settle down. So our strongest winds will be uh, tomorrow evening and into later tomorrow night and maybe first thing on Monday morning. Uh, here's a look at the European showing you um, it's a global model, but showing you where the strongest winds are predicted even farther north towards Guadalupe here. It looks like 
um, when we get to Sunday evening right after dark and then continuing Sunday night into the northeastern Caribbean. And then some gusty winds are possible. Uh, St. Croix, uh, the southern Leeward Islands, and eventually the south coast of Puerto Rico here uh, on Monday morning and maybe carrying into Monday afternoon in Puerto Rico. And so this is definitely ticking upward and something we need to be watching a lot more closely. Uh, rainfall will be heavy here in some of these locations as well. We could see one to three inches of rain, especially right over the middle of the Lesser Antilles, and that would be Sunday night and Monday. Uh, maybe some locally heavy rain Monday night and Tuesday across the southern Virgin Islands, across Puerto Rico, and even the southern Windward Islands. So uh, Trinidad, Tobago, um, St. Lucia, the Grenadines uh, have a chance of seeing some heavy rain as well. But this thing is moving at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. So it's going to hit quickly and it's going to leave fairly quickly. So that's all I got for you today. I got to get rolling here with the weekend. Um, I may try to get back on tomorrow, but it may be until Monday at this point. Uh, if this system down here does find a way to develop, I will have a video. If not, we're going to talk again on Monday. But I appreciate everybody's time here. I want to leave you real quick with a word of God um, for the people of God. Romans 5.1, Paul tells the church of Rome that therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, the reason I share the word of God at the end of my videos is because I've been called to do so as a Christian. Uh, it's like sharing some good news you got with your best friends. That's something that I truly uh, wish to do because I've been called to do that. Uh, but this news is wonderful because what it says is that people who have formed a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, whether they're new believers like I was 13 years ago uh, or people who have been with God forever, uh, we're no longer we're no longer trying to do things ourselves and feeling guilty about everything and being full of sin. Um, this says that when you choose to follow Jesus, that God removes that guilt of sin, making you acceptable to God. And we all sin. Everybody here is a sinner. But the nice part is that there is peace waiting for us, that God blesses us in so many ways because he is so good. And those who choose to follow Jesus and have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ will be given that grace. And that is the peace that I came to share with you today. It's not that I'm a Christian and I want everybody to know it, but that there's peace waiting for you. And I pray that you truly believe that. And if you don't, that's all right, because I didn't for a long time. Uh, but just know that if you are in a spot in your life where things are going very poorly and you don't feel like you have a relationship or believe what's next, there is an opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your savior. So I appreciate everybody. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do so. Thanks again for those of you who have been loyal subscribers. I really appreciate you all. Please get the word out to your friends. And as always, some no-nonsense uh, weather reports are coming here uh, with what I see and what I expect to happen. I'll see you all soon. God bless.